Hey everyone, welcome to my channel where I talk about history, archaeology, anthropology, all these things. Today I've got something a little different for you. I thought I'd read a Native American folktale. It's called The First Ship by the Chinook people who are the original inhabitants of the sort of Columbia River area where I am now. And I also have a shipwreck, so it's perfect. I bought this book, Indian Myths and Legends. It's by uh, Richard Ordoez and Alfonso Ortiz. It's a collection of more than 160 tales from 80 different tribal groups. So if you're interested in Native American folklore and things like that, then you might want to consider buying this book. Obviously, I've thrown an Amazon affiliate link down below, so you can buy it from there and I will get a few uh, pennies if you do that. This has uh, basically been inspired by another channel called Northworthy Sagas and Stories. If you're interested in the Viking sagas or folk tales in general, then definitely check out their channel. The link will be below. They're just a couple of Viking lads telling some uh, good sagas. So I really enjoy their channel and I thought I would make a Native American folk tale in tribute to them. So without further ado, here it is, the first ship. An old woman in a Clancet village near the mouth of Big River mourned the death of her son. For a year she grieved. One day she stopped her crying and took a walk along the beach where she had often gone in happier days. As she was returning to the village she saw a strange something out in the water not far from shore. At first she thought it was a whale. When she came nearer, she saw two spruce trees standing upright on it. It's not a whale, she said to herself. It's a monster! When she came near the strange thing that lay at the edge of the water, she saw that its outside was covered with copper, and that ropes were tied to the spruce trees. Then a bear came out of the strange thing and stood on it. It looked like a bear, but the face was the face of a human being. Oh, my son is dead! she wailed. And now the thing we have heard about is on our shore! Weeping, the old woman returned to her village. People who heard her called to others. An old woman is crying. Someone must have struck her. The men picked up their bows and arrows and rushed out to see what was the matter. Listen, an old man said. They heard the woman wailing, Oh, my son is dead. And the thing we have heard about is on our shore. All the people ran to meet her. What is it? Where is it? They asked. Oh, the thing we have heard about in tales is lying over there. She pointed toward the south shore of the village. There are two bears on it, or maybe they are people. Then the Indians ran toward the thing that lay near the edge of the water. The two creatures on it held copper kettles in their hands. When the Clatsop arrived at the beach, the creatures put their hands to their mouths and asked for water. Two of the Indians ran inland, hid behind a log a while, and then ran back to the beach. One of them climbed up on the strange thing, entered it, and looked around inside. It was full of boxes, and he found long strings of brass buttons. When he went outside to call his relatives to see the inside of the thing, he found that they had already set fire to it. He jumped down and joined the two creatures and the Indians on shore. The strange thing burned just like fat. Everything burned except the iron, the copper, and the brass. Then the Klatsop took the two strange-looking men to their chief. I want to keep one of the men with me, said the chief. Soon the people north of the river heard about the strange men and the strange thing, and they came to the Klatsop village. The Wellapa came from across the river the Chehalis and the Cowlitz from farther north, and even the Quinault came from up the coast, and people from up the river came also, the Klikitat and others farther up. The Klatsop sold the iron, brass, and copper. They traded one nail for a good deer skin. For a long necklace of shells, they gave several nails. One man traded a piece of brass two fingers wide for a slave. None of the Indians had ever seen iron or brass before. The Clatsop became rich selling the metal to other tribes. The two Clatsop chiefs kept the two men who came on the ship. One stayed at the village called Clatsop, and the other stayed at the village on the Cape. Reported by Franz Boas in 1894. What I find really fascinating about that story is that it must be based on a true story. Presumably, in the history of the Chinook people, an old ship got washed up on shore here, which happens all the time. As you can see, I'm filming this by a shipwreck today. And it's so interesting how this shipwreck changed their culture, you know, access to metal, uh, made them rich, and they were able to trade it, trade metal for slaves and beads and uh, other things they considered valuable. And uh, it's also so fascinating their descriptions of these large ships, which of course they had never seen before, how 
the masts of the ship were des described as spruce trees. And to me, it's just a fascinating tale. So I'm going to share more folk tales on the channel. And if that's what you're interested in, then consider subscribing. Once more, shout out to the guys at Northworthy Sargs and Stories. Keep doing what you're doing. And I'll see you next time. See ya. Thank you.